Democratic Visions as Handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Our guest is community activist and uh, DFL veteran Bill Davis. Bill is a past president of the Minneapolis branch of the NAACP. He's past chair of the Minneapolis Civil Rights Committee. He's a co-chair of the African American Subcaucus of the State DFL Party. He's on the Democratic National Committee and he's a presidential elector. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Bill, uh, you and I have known each other for a long time. Can you tell our viewers uh, what your occupation is and uh, uh, how long you've been there? Sure. I'm the uh, president and CEO of Community Action in Minneapolis, which is one of uh, the anti-poverty programs established back in 1964 under uh, then President Lyndon Baines Johnson and, and Hubert Humphrey was the vice president at that time. Uh, the organization is one of a thousand across the United States. We serve and help low-income people, senior citizens, people with small children, trying to help them find their way back to mainstream in terms of job opportunities, in terms of uh, getting their lives back in order. So it's a very rewarding and gratifying position, needless to say. I've been in that role for the last 19 years, and we like to think that we help people help themselves more than anything else. I'd like to focus on uh, uh, something that I think you as a veteran uh, a party member and a community activist can sure. help us out on, and that is the issue that has been uh, the uh, uproar that has mm -hmm. been uh, accompanying the President Obama's uh, efforts to uh, uh, promote a health care program in this uh, country. Uh, it, it seems to me that we're moving into a phase of our society where people are simply have very little regard for other people's liberties and rights. The climate that's being created as a result of this is, is now escalating to where it's not only just being the shouting, but now we're starting to see a little violence mixed in as well. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a couple of quotes from uh, Jimmy Carter, because sure. as you're aware, Jimmy Carter has linked right. these attacks on President Obama uh, as being based, at least in part, on racism. Sure. Here's, one of the, uh, here's one of the quotes. When a radical fringe element of demonstrators and others begin to attack the President of the United States as an enemy or as a reincarnation of Adolf Hitler, or when they wave signs in the air that we should have buried Obama with Kennedy, these kind of things are beyond the bounds. Yeah. Have you, uh, do you share that sentiment? Do you think Jimmy Carter was right in that regard? I think he spoke out loud what people have been thinking, particularly in the civil rights community. I, you know, we had the first time in the history of this country, we, we took a bold step forward. We did what we felt needed to be done, and we elected an African American, not because he was an African American, because he was the best candidate who happened to be an African American. And now we have people who are using this as a liability. They're saying that because you're an African-American, you aren't worthy of being able to serve this country. These are the people that obviously didn't vote for him in the first place. People who feel now, as a result of uh, some of these uh, shout outs or, or town hall meetings as they were referred to also, uh, feel emboldened, are now saying and doing things that perhaps they were doing more uh, below the radar. And they're being cheered on by these call-in shows by the tweaks that go out by these people who are Twittering. Uh, all of this is adding to a whole new field of uh, opportunity for people uh, who are hateful, if you will, and who simply have a blatant disregard for anyone's rights. They've given a platform to these people? Well, they've given anonymity as well, because you don't have to step forward and say, you can make up a name and have yourself uh, Twittered or release information and say inflammatory things without any repercussions as a result. Bill, uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Glenn Beck, uh, uh, th those are people that are on national radio and television, but even locally, don't we have uh, people like uh, Jason Lewis that, uh, that uh, sort of fuel the fire that, uh, that uh, caused some people to act out of character? Uh, absolutely. We have our own uh, local brand, if you will, in, in, in Minnesota and Twin Cities area. And it's just as insidious, just as harmful, uh, just as uh, detrimental to our society as, as what we hear on a national level. And, and that's not what our society is built on. Our society is built on people of goodwill and good conscience, and we need to hear from them more often than what we have. Can we talk briefly about uh, this incident that took place last month up in Brooklyn Park sure. where uh, two, uh, two men, one of whom was autistic, 
uh, was were beaten up in a hate crime. Uh, that was in, in your area, was Absolutely. it not? Absolutely, yeah, it was in my neighborhood. I mean, it's a horrendous event, but I understand that there was a, uh, a service uh, or a rally that uh, took place uh, several days later, uh, promoted by the, uh, uh, the DFL and community leaders up that way. Did you go to that? Absolutely, I did attend that, and it was a very heartwarming event. It was an opportunity for the community to acknowledge what had happened, and then begin a healing process, and then begin to a call for action. We had an opportunity to hear from the young man that was uh, assaulted, uh, who uh, was coming home from work uh, using the park as a shortcut. And this young man, who was an extremely brave individual, he was accosted by three people, three men ganged up on him. And not only did they take his iPod and his money, but they also tried to take his clothes off of him uh, to additionally humiliate him exactly. in the public. So. And then after that incident, they went around the corner and assaulted another gentleman. So it was just a, a random act of meanness, if you will, uh, in, in a community that doesn't witness that kind of activity on a regular basis. In fact, it's, it's an anomaly, and hopefully it'll stay that way, that, that that had happened. But I think the gathering at the community center and hearing from elected officials and clergymen and other representatives from the community was an opportunity for people to say, this is our community, enough is enough, we're not gonna allow this to continue to happen without there being some repercussions that we're gonna be able, we're gonna be, take our community back, take our parks back, take our, 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 the whole situation and turn it around and make a positive out of something that was a very negative situation. Uh, we need to talk about a lot of the positive things that happen in our community. Well spoken, Bill. Do you want to meet the kind of progressive leaders and thinkers you see on Democratic Visions? Well, you know you can at a DFL Community Forum. Community forums meet monthly in Minnetonka, Edina, Bloomington, Plymouth, and other towns. The discussions are about the hottest issues in settings that are as friendly as a Minnesota kitchen. You betcha! Go to this website for topics, speakers, times, and places. Everyone's welcome to join the conversations. That's on the web at myaurora.org. Cream or sugar? Get going at myaurora.org. We'll be looking for you.